If you are thinking of a digital product, there are two competing distribution models. In the right corner, we have old school on-premise model. And in the left corner, we have a fancy SaaS. Both models are trying to achieve the same fundamental goal, to provide a user with intuitive, valuable, and convenient apps. But in terms of design, you cannot treat SaaS and on-premise products the same way. Hi, I'm Ilya, the founder of Elekin, product design agency. We at Elekin specialize designing exclusively for SaaS apps, and we have gained a lot of valuable experience since since 2015. Back in the late 90s, when you sold software, you sold software. You developed your product and then somehow delivered it to your customers packed in a floppy disk, CD, DVD, whatever. Then customers installed your app on their computers and, if everything went well, started using it. Now, fast forward to today. With the development of a cloud technology, many tech companies shifted to a SaaS model. What they produce is the same thing as before, but instead of selling products directly, they sell you temporary access to them. The SaaS distribution model brings opportunities and new requirements to product design. For instance, unlimited product combinations. With the on-premise model, you could create basic and pro product versions, but with SaaS, nothing limits you from designing multiple product packages. Look at Salesforce, for instance. It offers 13 product combinations, and each package goes in several pricing tiers. On one hand, with the SaaS model, you can create ideal packaging aligned with each of your buyer personas. But on the other hand, your designer must have decent skills to shuffle numerous product blocks into consistent user flows. Because adding new features to an app is more addictive than smoking. You never know when to stop and one day what was cozy and coherent startup is getting pretty overload scaled up. The next distinctive feature of SaaS design is subscription management. With on-premise apps, your job is done at the point when customers pay and get their products. With SaaS apps, you have to design a wide range of subscription management processes, from making changes to an ongoing subscription, to issuing refund, managing trials, and making recurring payments. At the same time, SaaS application may need support tier plans, usage-based prices, or a mix of recurring and one-time charges. And the SaaS designer needs to have a guts for solving such complex challenges. Another thing to consider when talking about the design for SaaS is onboarding. Very often companies use the freemium pricing model or provide their customers with a trial version for their SaaS. The quicker users understand how the product works, the quicker they decide whether to upgrade and start paying for the service. Therefore, it's very important to design a simple and obtrusive onboarding process from the very first stages of users' interaction with the cloud service. You also cannot ignore user roles and permissions system. When users bought an on-premise software, they usually work with it on one computer. Now that everything is web-based, apps allow you to do everything online. Manage the whole team inside the app with different people having different permissions. If you've ever used Slack, you probably know what I mean. The account was paid from one computer, but was used by dozens, if not hundreds, of people. Each person had their own private space, participated in some group chats, and had no access to others. It was a quite simple example. Now imagine the pain of planning in all roles and permissions for a CRM application. The next point of our list is analytics. With an on-premise distribution model after this sale, you have no idea what fate awaits your product. Yes, history knows some creepy founders that stalk people who left retail stores with their products. I'm talking about Scott Cook, the founder of Intuit. But those were rare cases. Usually, an on-premise model gives you no chance to figure out user journeys, churn reasons, and aha moments. SaaS, in contrast, gives us access to that sacred knowledge thanks to product tracking and analytics. Analytics helps us to understand the decision-making process at the multiple levels, from new feature prioritization to onboarding optimization. It also allows us to check the product team's assumptions before implementing them to leverage risks. That is, if your product designer is competent at UX research, of course. Another SaaS feature that creates new opportunities and new challenges for SaaS designers is contextual support. When users encounter some problem with using the on-premise product, they are redirected to a company's website to solve the issues or have to to contact the support team, which creates friction and negatively influences the customer experience. At the same time, the SaaS model allows the company to provide user support while keeping them in the context of their tasks with the help of tooltips with relevant information or live chat. One other important SaaS distinction is non-stop updates. With the SaaS distribution model, you don't need to make new releases every year. You can make small upgrades to polish the product and a new feature run 24 tests simultaneously. It gives you enormous flexibility to develop targeted features for different audiences. Facebook 
Facebook, for example, has different offers for regular users and business owners to monetize their audience better. The flip side of the coin is by adding more and more little things without control, you risk turning your SaaS app into bulky, unusable Tower of Babel. The new functionality often goes beyond the original project scope, shattering the app's information architecture and consistency. New features, updates, and optimizations turn the app into a mess. Customer support notices that users struggle to find what they need and do what they want. The marketing team runs a lengthy, costly customer acquisition process when conversions stagnate. If some of those symptoms sound familiar to you, it's time to think of a product redesign. But the redesign is a whole different thing. If you are interested, I have a playlist on that topic. Please check it out. To summarize the specifics of a product redesign for SaaS, let me list some of the best design practices for you. Build the right interface hierarchy. You have to think out a crystal clear value proposition and ways to communicate it to your customers. Organizing a straightforward hierarchy with intuitive navigation helps users quickly find the needed tools and information and therefore quickly feel the product's value. In other words, building a clear information hierarchy makes it possible to easily navigate through the application. So the first screen users see as they open your cloud app should provide quick access to the most relevant data. As well, it should line up all the essential features in the menu bar so that users don't waste time searching for something they've initially come for. Strive for frictionless sign-up. Product owners may have designed to gather as much information about their users as possible front using a lengthy and complex sign-up process. However, with SaaS product, you'll have many opportunities to study users later as they engage with the app. Not to scare away all of your customers, it's essential to design a fast and frictionless sign-up. Create a noticeable CTA button for your free trial and subscribe option. Gather only basic information such as name and email address. Shorten the number of steps for the sign-up as much as you can. Make it possible to register with social media or Google account. Use common patterns. When users start interacting with a new app, they expect it to have something in common with the application they already used. To reduce cognitive load and help people learn how to use your app faster, elegant designers recommend using SaaS UX patterns. Repeatable solution to recurrent design problems. A right-to-left swipe to scroll through the images, a footer menu for mobile navigation, or data input with feedback that lets users understand if they fill in fields correctly are only several examples of UX patterns. Strive for simplicity. Striving for simplicity doesn't mean you have to choose only flat and monochromatic color schemes. It's more about making sure each visual element and piece of context has its purpose apart from just looking pretty and taking up the space. And finally, make it accessible. Good design should make product usable for all people, no matter what their age or psychological conditions are. Make your SaaS apps inclusive, readable, and legible even if you have to sacrifice visual beauty for this purpose. Next time you hesitate about which font or color to choose, opt for the one that will make your product more accessible. That's all for now. If this video was useful, please hit the like button and subscribe, and see you soon.